Hey guys, Don here. Welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery, where we're trying to bring your practice to the million dollar mark and beyond. I'm going to go over today how to 10x your night splints that you use in the office. I do something when I think about things, it's called a, an experience transformer, and it's something that I learned by going to Strategic Coach. I've been going there <laughs> for a lot of years because it kind of helps my practice to get better. I look at kind of what's working and what's not working and what are where areas of in, improvement. So I'm going to go through this and then kind of ways to kind of 10 exit at the end. Okay, so night splint is something that we all kind of use. I know there's a couple of different types. I'm not going to go into detail. We use the traditional ones, not the ones that go up above, above the knee. What's working is that I do quite a few night splints. Actually, pretty much every patient with Aquinas, Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, most have Aquinas. And even a lot of times like neuropathy, hallux limitus, things like that are tending to get a, a night splint. I'm doing a lot more bilateral, and I'll explain that. In the beginning, I was doing unilateral, and I would have them switch. But if they're going to try to be in it for any period of time, it's a lot easier for bilateral. So that's something they might want to consider. I'm, I'm doing it on the first visit that they come in. So there's a, a kind of a, a routine that I give them for loosening up the back of the calf. It usually involves foam rolling, a night splint, and then a morning stretch. My staff is the one that dispense all of them, so it doesn't take any time for me. They check insurance, things like that. And I include this in my thing I call my treatment sheets. So my treatment sheets are the, are the things that I um, have in my pocket here. Let me just show you. It's these things that I kind of fill out with my patients in front of them, and it has like night splints in there, and I fill that out. Um, other ones I print out, so if you want to look at those, if you haven't looked at those, you can go to patientpresentations.com, and you'll see my presentation, and then uh, on any of those, like plantar fasciitis, there's a treatment sheet, so you can kind of look at what that looks like if, if you're interested to see how I do it. I'm doing it much more for neuropathy. I have this kind of template that I made, or a treatment sheet on neuropathy, so you can look at the neuropathy one and it has like all these different things, but part of it is loosening up the, the muscles because I think a lot of times the tightness in the back of the calf and other places can put more pull on the, on the nerves and that can, that can help it as well, as well for hallux limitus. So those things that are working, the things that aren't working is sometimes they bring, it gives numbness to the toes. So I will tell patients to take out, we have one with a little wedge in the front, so we have them take out that wedge, have them loosen the side. Some prefer or have used like an anterior night splint or a Strasburg sock, and so with that, they they're kind of think that they're having one, but I tend to explain the difference and I tell the insurance covers it. Sometimes the staff is resistant to do bilateral because they've been used to doing unilateral, so that's something that's taking me some time. And, and sometimes we run out of them because we're doing so many of them. Many times we run out of night splints. So what are the improvements? The the improvements, so, so how do we not run out? So basically having a system, like you know, how, what sizes we have, once we get to a certain level, then order more because we're using so many of them. So the improvements, so doing bilateral, I, I do it for Aquinas. Many times they'll have both sides. Now, the way I do it is I ask patients, I say, hey, you know, if you can do it on one side and use it three, let's say three hours on one side and three hours on the other, but that's like six hours a day, or you can get two of them. And I ask them, and I ask them, it's up to you. Do you want one or two? And most of them ask for two. So that's how I do it. I ask them if they want to. They could choose to do one, but most of them ask for two. I'm tending to do it for neuropathy because people are wanting more natural things. So I do foam rolling, night splint, stuff like that. And a lot of times it can help with some some types of neuropathy that they have. It always helps with Aquinas. And I usually do it that first. And then if it's not getting better, I'll talk to them about uh, physical therapy. For a lot of Hallux Limitus as well has that as well. And, and then at the follow-up, I evaluate kind of how they're doing. And if it's not getting better, I'll just verify they're doing it. They're doing the foam rolling, they're doing the stretching, and they're doing things like that. So I think that those are some ways that you can kind of 10x. So for me, the best thing about I can do a lot more night splints is if I have it in my process. So basically every plantar fasciitis, every Achilles tendonitis, I'm going through Aquinas and I'm explaining that, and then they're getting it the first visit. So I think that's the key is just having it part of your protocol. For me, it's easier to have it written down or in a presentation. And, but if you have a, a different way, that's great. But as long as you're used to doing it, your staff is doing it, we actually call this the Pelto Special. So every they know, and I say Pelto Special on the right foot, so they're gonna know they're gonna get the, they're gonna teach them to do foam rolling because they purchase a foam roller as well. We teach them how to do that in the back of the calf. We teach them how to do a morning stretch with a towel or a belt, and then we teach them to do the night splints. So we have to kind of have that combination, not just the night splint. I don't have my patients do much stretching because they can try that thing online. I try not to give patients stuff that they can, um, kind of buy it online. So if you want to learn more about some of these things we've talked about, go to patientpresentations.com. You can see my treatment sheets up top. If you're interested in learning more, you can go to um, Podiatry Practice Mastery. I'm kind of revamping the site here. It comes soon, so you might see some new things on there, some new offers. I'm, I'm working with a, a couple of people on a small group coaching 
that you might be interested in if you want that more accountability. Okay, once again, hope this is beneficial. Until next time, thanks.